right. Welcome, everybody, to today's uh, virtual Lunch and Learn. We are very happy to have uh, Deva and Stacy from Magic Room Bus um, that are, is going to be joining us today. Um, my name is Erin Long, and I'm the marketing coordinator here at the Humane Society of Hartford County, and uh, also joined by Jen Swanson, who's the executive director at the Humane Society. Um, so just some quick housekeeping items. Uh, if you would like to ask a question today during the presentation, you're going to see um, there's a... a icon if you move your mouse the window will pop up and then you're going to see an icon that looks like a thought bubble um, and you can go ahead and that's our chat go ahead and ask any questions that you have in the chat uh, throughout the presentation and we'll be sure to have uh, time at the end for a question and answer um, we are recording today's presentation, so just wanted to let everybody know that, so um, it will be available um, afterward for um, playback. And then, so at this point, I'm going to turn everything over to uh, Jen Swanson, who's going to take it away and, and get things kicked off. Thank you, Erin. Um, and thank you, Deva and Stacy as well. Um, I want to welcome you uh, also to this month's Lunch and Learn, Virtual Lunch and Learn. Um, I am just here to uh, host our, of course, our guest presenters will be doing the bulk of the presentation, but I just want to do a little introduction for them. Um, so Deva and Stacy are owners of Magic Groom Bus, which is a mobile grooming service here in Harford County. Um, they met while working at PetSmart in Abingdon over 10 years ago. Uh, Deva was the salon manager and taught Stacy everything she knows. So Stacy is a single mom of three boys, uh, works full time, um, and then still some at PetSmart for the past 10 years, working her way up or worked her way up to salon manager where she supervised up to 10 associates. Um, she's always wanted to be her own boss and um, dreamed of spending time more time with her boys. So as soon as she got the opportunity to start Magic Room Boss, she definitely did that. Um, she is one of the original groomers hired at PetSmart and used her years there developing not only her incredible grooming skills, uh, but also her ability to teach others. She was a salon manager and taught Stacy, so their grooming styles are very similar, which is good, obviously, if they're working together in a small space, sharing clients. Um, even at times when she wasn't grooming at PetSmart, though, she would groom her clients in her home or at their home. Uh, because of the friendship that they share and the bond that comes with the love of animals and grooming, they decided to build their own business so they could take care of their pups in the best way that they saw fit. That's where Magic Room Bus came in. The mobile grooming experience not only gives the pups the best service, but also provides the perfect atmosphere for Stacy and Deva to do what they do best, which is to groom. So that is Stacy and Deva's story. Uh, they will be talking in just a few minutes. I'm going to do just a couple quick slides to talk about the Humane Society as well, just so you can learn a little bit more about who we are and what we do. Um, so just give me one second here and I'm going to share my screen with you. Okay. Um, so obviously we, we talked a little bit about Dave and Stacy already. I grabbed this little picture of Harry from their, uh, from their Facebook page, which of course they are on Facebook. Um, they have a lot of befores and afters um, and they're all very cute, but something about this one really jumped out at me. And I think it's just his cute little face at the end where he looks like a little teddy bear. Um, and then of course, you know, there's nothing cuter slash sadder than a totally soaking wet dog. So, um, so the first picture is very cute to me as well. Um, so again, just our panel today, Erin is our marketing coordinator who you've already met, myself, of course, and then our guest presenters as well. So about who we are, just in case you're not familiar with who we are, uh, we're the Humane Society of Harford County. We are your municipal open admission shelter here in Harford County. We were established in 1946 by a woman named Elsa Voss. Um, last year, so I need to update this, last year was our 75th anniversary year. Um, so we've been celebrating 76 years now of serving the people and pets of Harford County. And we're very proud to do that until we put ourselves out of business, which is ultimately our goal, right? Our mission is to promote the humane treatment of homeless, stray, and abandoned animals by providing shelter, care, adoptions, and community education. We've been in the same location since our founding, but our new 19,000 square foot facility opened in 2016. So if you have not been here, especially if you had come to the old place and you can really, you can imagine the old place and, and see the new place, uh, having that perspective really makes a difference. Uh, but definitely do come out and give us a visit. We're open Monday through Friday from two to six and Saturday from 12 to five for visitation. 
We are a private 501c3 nonprofit organization, and we contract with the Harford County government, and that's called a public-private partnership. So we're a nonprofit that provides the sheltering service to the citizens of Harford County, um, and Harford County government provides portions of our funding um, for that service so they do not have to operate their own shelter. We are not affiliated with the Humane Society of the United States, the ASPCA, or other organizations. A lot of people think that because it says Humane Society in our name that we are somehow affiliated with them. Um, however, we are not. They're not an umbrella organization for local organizations. They do great work. Um, they just don't do sheltering. Um, they do provide support for us through education opportunities, grant opportunities, things like that. All of the large organizations do, uh, but they do not operate shelters. So if you want your funding to go directly to your local shelter, please donate directly to your local shelter. Uh, our annual operating budget is about $1.4 million a year. Currently, we receive $950,000 of that from the Harford County government, and then the rest is raised through fundraising, adoption fees and such, and of course, restitution, um, which is much less common for us to receive. So just sort of a 10,000 mile overview of what we do. We care for approximately 3,000 to 3,500 animals a year of all species, but it is mostly cats that come into our shelter. So about 70% um, of our annual intake are cats. A lot of people think Harford County is dog country, but it is definitely cat country. Uh, we, of course, promote uh, uh, animal adoption as the first option um, for when you're looking for a pet. We also provide shelter intervention counseling, and that is sort of a, like a diversion program to help people that are looking to surrender their pet, to help them find some other alternatives so that they don't have to surrender their pet. Um, the way that we do that is connecting them with community resources that they may not be aware of. Um, we have a lost and found registry, of course. We do a pet food pantry here as well. We offer low cost puppy and adult dog obedience classes, free behavior consultations for dogs, and a lot more. And of course, you can find more information about that on our website. We support the pets and people of Harford County through outreach efforts, community, uh, community education, humane education, um, all of these types of programs. Again, more information on our website, but there's multiple programs out there. And then we advocate for animals through legislative efforts and in the courts um, because we are a non I'm sorry, because we are the municipal shelter, even though we're a nonprofit, we do take in animals that are seized by animal control uh, and they do come here and we have to care for them. And there's a cost associated with that. Um, so we do advocate for not only the restitution to try and recoup some of our costs, but of course, to make sure that the people that perpetrated any type of animal crimes are held accountable and that there's justice served. So just a little bit more about who, uh, you know, our relationship to animal control. As I said, we are not animal control. That is a function of the Harford County Sheriff's Office here in Harford County, but we do work very closely with them. So anytime animal control picks up an animal, either a stray or an injured animal, owner surrenders, and of course, you know, neglect, cruelty cases, dog fighting, hoarding, all of those types of animals, uh, they bring them here. Animal control does not have their own shelter. We are it. Um, so we care for those animals, as I said, while they're on their stray hold or if there's a criminal case while it's playing out in court. And then, of course, we're present at trial to advocate for the animal and to try and recoup some of our funds if possible. Uh, we do provide humane uh, euthanasia for animals that are brought in by animal control that require rabies testing or are catastrophically injured or ill. So hit by car um, or other you know, types of injuries like that. Um, we do uh, provide that for animal control. They don't do that themselves. Um, what we do not do is pick up stray pets or conduct humane educate um, humane <laughs> investigations or enforce humane laws. That is a function of the sheriff's office. So if you have an issue like that where you think, you know, you, you see people leaving their pet out when they shouldn't or, you know, a, a pet in the neighborhood that's chronically getting stray uh, or any other issues, any concerns, you should contact animal control directly. Um, unfortunately, we can't really do anything other than forward on your um, your concern to them. Uh, we can't follow up on that ourselves, unfortunately. Um, so that's just a little quick overview about the difference between us. Um, so that's the only slides that I had for you, really. Um, just a reminder, of course, uh, we do have these monthly virtual lunch and learns that you're attending right now or listening to perhaps on demand because we are recording them and have them available on our website. 
You can also sign up for our monthly e-newsletter through our website if you have not done that already, which will keep you abreast of everything that we have going on, including the lunch and learns and so much more. Um, make sure that you microchip your pet and make sure that that information is current. Um, we see about 60% of our annual intake are stray animals that come into the shelter and um, our return to owner rate for dogs is very good, but for cats, it's pretty low, which is sort of the national trend. But um, a lot of people don't microchip their cats. And of those 60% of all animals that come into the shelter, only about seven to 8% of them already have a microchip on board where the information is up to date. Um, so making sure that you're keeping that information current. You can register any brand of chip for free and for life through foundanimals.org. You can also use um, Petco's Lost Love site. It used to be called Finding Rover. It is facial recognition software to help reunite lost pets. Um, it's really interesting, and I won't go into a whole lot of detail about it, but get your animal's information on there now and so that you're not at the last second scrambling around trying to do it once your pet, if your pet goes missing. And then, of course, tons of other information and resources are available on our website at hartfordshelter.org. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and stop presenting, and I am going to turn it over to Stacy and Deva. Oh, you have to unmute yourselves. Okay. Okay. Hi. Um. So I'm Deva. This is Stacy. Um. I might be doing most of the talking today because Stacy's losing her voice. Yep. But she'll chime in when she can. Um, so we don't have a whole fancy presentation or slides or anything We're we're just going to talk to you like people because mm -hmm. we really want people to understand that we're people and we enjoy when they do. Um, so basically, we just want to um, talk about all of the things that you can and should be doing as far as basic grooming concerns. Um, I think it's pretty important that you you really think of your pet like really another person in your family. Um, because their needs are pretty anatomically similar to ours. You know, they have hair and teeth and nails and all the things that we have that need to be taken care of and kept up with. Um, so basically the first thing we want to stress today is brushing. Um, whether your dog is long hair or short hair, it's really important for the health of your dog. Um, even as simple as just like finding new bumps and and weird skin things that your dog might have. Like a lot of health concerns are found by groomers because we're touching every inch of your dog when you bring it into us. Um, so even as far as spreading the oils around, keeping keeping the airflow good, mm. um, keeping away hot spots, stuff like that. Controlling the shedding. Yes. Like a lot of people think that dogs that are not long haired don't need to be brushed, but then they also complain about their shedding. And a, a, a simple brushing once a week could seriously control the shedding for you without having to wait every six to eight weeks to take them to the group. Yeah. And, and a lot of times we'll see dogs that are getting shaved because of shedding, um, dogs that really shouldn't be shaved um, because their coat does regulate a lot of things, whether it's temperature, protecting them from the sun, elements, things like that. Um, but it does not prevent shedding. It does not. The only thing it's going to do is make the shedding hair shorter. Like they're still going to, and then they'll probably stick in you mm -hmm. after that. Not just be laying around all over the house. They'll probably poke in you because they're splinters. Um, but yeah, so brushing is really important. Um, Especially with the long haired dogs, if you do want to keep them longer haired, that's more maintenance you have to do in between. Um, saving all of that for like the groomer to do for the day of is like really stinky for your dog because mm. <laughs> brushing doesn't feel good. Just like if you were to literally skip a day brushing your hair, run through the rainy yard, you might be wearing a sweater your family's just telling you what a good boy you are all day long and then you skip a week brushing your hair and then a month and then maybe two months and then we show up and they're all patchy matted and you guys want that brushed out and then they're just like i don't know but every time these girls show up it's the pits yeah it, it's the pits yeah. um 
so yeah, you want to maintain that in between. So it's just a regular thing. That's just the norm. Yep. Like they're used to it. It's no big deal. And Not when brushing is done regularly, there's no reason for it to ever hurt. Does it, does it hurt when you brush your hair at the end of the day? Um, just turn it into a very happy experience. That's part of your bonding time with your dog while you're petting them, pet them with a brush. Yeah. Um, it's just, it, it, it gives you extra time with your dog. But like I said, it's bonding time with your dog. Um, and that allows us to have bonding time with your dog when we have them. Cause then they're still happy and they're not scared when they see us. Um, like if every time you went to the dentist, you had to get a filling every time you're going to hate it. Cause you know, you're going to get a shot every time. So my dogs hate the, the, the vet, but we don't want them to hate us. <laughs> yeah. Um, grooming is a lifelong commitment. Like, and, and a lot of people think that if their pets don't like it or they have a hard time with the groomer, the tendency, of course, you want to save your dog from that, yeah. right? You want to keep them from being anxious or upset or anything. But in reality, if it becomes part of their routine, mm -hmm. it's not traumatizing each time. We're not brushing out mats or trimming off half an inch of toenail yep. or, I don't know, shaving out nasty eye boogies that are caked up yeah. they won't hate it so much nope. it'll they might just come be in regular. And they're like oh my god i get so many pets and love when i come in here yeah. and i might not like the dryer but that's quick we just still have fun and, yeah like um, um so so brush and comb often just simple it's it's a lot of people ask us you know what they can be doing. And it's like, we always give the most simple answers yeah. and they think it's a trick. Like it's, it's really just a comb and a brush. It's the same thing we would be doing. It's just do it more often and it won't be as hard. Yeah. And really that's, that's your best way to keep down your cost of grooming as well. So let's say you adopt a dog that's older and you don't know why they've got anxieties leading up to this already. And they just won't let you brush them. As the person who adopted them, it's still your responsibility to make sure that they get brushed up um, and to find a way to get them to learn to tolerate it. Um, because either way, letting them get matted, it's just, it, it's painful for them. So it, it's, it's just, you're not taking care of them by avoiding it because they don't like it. Um, so even if that means at first scheduling more regular groomings, even if they don't get a haircut, We'll just like pay them and brush them out for you um, just to help them learn that it's not a bad thing. Yeah. Um, um, let's see. As far as other simple things you can do, um, brushing teeth at home. We get a lot of questions. Why is, why is their breath a so lot. stinky? <laughs> you got to brush their teeth. Um, they're eating things that smell like dog food <laughs> and maybe worse. <laughs> um, so basically regular, regular dental, but like imagine if you didn't ever, go with, yeah, ever. literally three months in between, yeah. we get people asking us to brush their dog's teeth because it, it smells bad in there. Us, that's not going to do anything. Yeah. Us brushing your dog's teeth once every three months is not going to make their breath smell good. No. Um, so it, it's literally as simple. They have so many things, water additives, just enzymatic toothpaste that you can literally just put on your finger and rub it's in their mouth. In. Their saliva works it around, breaks it down. They have treats. treats they can chew. Yeah. All kinds of stuff. You got to get in there. You got to get in there and make it not stink regularly, yeah. just like you do in your own mouth. And even like to keep up with that, if you keep up with your dog's shots and their vet records and everything, having the vet go in and scrape their teeth is also important. If they already have a ton of tartar buildup, the, the at-home regular treatments aren't going to just break through that tartar. You got to have the vet scrape it off first, just like you go to the dentist every six months to get your teeth cleaned by a professional, but then... And you brush them at home. You have to have the vet do it, and then you can keep up that daily maintenance at home. Yeah, and and even if you don't want to spend money on products, or you're funny about what kind of things go on your dog, like you can literally make natural toothpaste just out of like coconut oil and baking soda. It's minimal. It's just little, like very very small daily, weekly things that you can put into your routine that would make a world of difference for your yes. dog. That is not something that groomers 
can fix every every time you come for your plug. Yeah, and, and you got to think, like, not just from a stinky breath standpoint, but from an actual dental disease standpoint. If mm -hmm. you're not doing these things and they have plaque and tartar buildup and then they get a bad tooth and then you got to spend hundreds of dollars or yeah. more at the vet, eight teeth removed yeah totally. or that could get into their bloodstream yeah. and cause other systemic problems so it's really prevention is key basically you can save yourself money in the long run by just doing little things at home save and yourself go. money and save yourself the dog a lot of pain yes. again as well yeah because yeah. imagine trying eat. to eat with those teeth yeah boo <laughs> um so then there's the eye boogies okay. Um, there's an actual technical term for it. It's called room. It's R H E U M, <laughs> but we just call it eye boogies. It, um, again, it's simple. <laughs> yeah. Um, but literally, it's it's we wake up every morning and we do the we do this, <laughs> but dogs can't because they have claws. Um, so basically, just wipe that out every day, and and don't let it build up. We get that question probably more than the stinky teeth or anything like that. Like, how can I get the stuff in their eyes? And we're just like, don't overthink it. Just wipe it out. Yeah. Um, I We were just talking about it and how I think a lot of the short hair dogs that don't need haircuts, you can see it a lot easier and there's not the hair to catch it. So I feel like people clean those eyes out a lot, but the dogs, the Shih Tzus, the Maltese, the Poodles, everything that has the hair there to catch it, then the eye boogies get matted into the fur that's right there. And then you can develop eye infections underneath. Um, it gets real matted because it's moist at all times. And then it's just, it's very painful right on their eyelids to pull those eye boogies off once they've hardened. Um, it's it, essentially a scab. Yeah. So like that's what it looks like and that's what it turns into because it's just like a cap keeping all that moisture, all those tears just against yeah. the skin. And then we shave it off, and then it's raw. And then they, and like she said, it can open the eye to like get more debris, more infection. They might paw at it more and cut themselves. Like it's just wipe their eyeballs out. And it's out. just anything you're comfortable with. I've had so many people say, "Well, what do I use?" Literally anything you're comfortable with. You can go get a warm towel if that's what you want to do, or you can use your finger. Yeah. Or comb. Or a baby wipe. Yeah, a, a tissue square. Literally anything paper. if you don't want to touch it. Um, but just scoop them right out. That's it. Just wipe them just like your own eyes. Yeah. Same with tear stains with the white dogs. Yeah. Like, if you just keep up every day and just wipe them wet washcloth or cotton ball or anything yeah. like that, just continuously keep it from, from build up. It's just like a protein in their tears and saliva. So you'll see some dogs with like stains around their mouth or stains around their paws mm -hmm. from like licking and stuff like that. That's all it is. So yeah. just like wipe it out often. Um, toenails, oh. the mm -hmm. business, um, everyone's top complaint. Um, we recommend those be done around once a month, mm -hmm. unless your dog is doing a lot of walking on concrete. We do see dogs that maintain their own, yeah. never need to be done. Like maybe the dew claws, cause they don't touch the ground. Yeah. Um, but basically once a month maintenance is good. Um, it can, it can be painful if they grow too long. Um, not only is it painful for them just to stand on the ground because they're putting pressure on the nail bed, which is just their toes. Um, but if it grows further, it can grow around into the pad and pierce the pad. Lord knows what they'll be walk, walking in. So, yeah. so much is going to get into that wound. Oh. It's It can progress so far, it's not even funny. Um, and then if they don't grow into the pad, they can grow like, sideways. Yeah. So it's altering the structure of the foot which can alter the gait of the dog. Yeah. It can alter, they're gonna compensate for the pain that they're putting on their feet. So. Or the amount of room they literally can't put their toes down regularly anymore if their nails are so long they're hitting the ground and keeping their like their toes. Up. Yeah. So imagine like the arthritis and like the painful joints and stuff like walking on that. Yeah. So obviously we've seen some horror stories um, not everyone is is letting 
letting their dogs yeah. go that far. But just a, just a once a month check in with the toes is mm -hmm. good, I would say. Um, even as far as like shaving the pad hair, it can help older dogs on like wood floors. A lot of people think it's just the nails that's yeah. keeping their dogs from walking, but that pad hair um, is pretty important too. Um, even as far as like what they're tracking in from outside, it's gross. It can trap moisture in there. Um, so yeah, those are just little things that you can do at home if you're comfortable. Um, these these are the type of nail clippers we use, the scissor yeah. style. Um, Always. Yes, we never, they do make these in different sizes. These are like medium. They make what we call my hedge clippers, which yeah. are like this big. We use on like the bigger dogs. Um, they make tiny ones for cats, all, all scissor mm -hmm. type. Always though. Yeah. The guillotine where you gotta like put their nail through a hole. Yeah, boo. We've never used that. I don't, I don't like it. Um, but yeah, if you're not comfortable doing that at home, just a little at a time, just snip the tips. That's really all you need to do to keep up oh. with it. Um, yeah, bring, bring them to us or any salon. It doesn't oh. have to be on, but it could be. <laughs> um, do the frequency of bathing. Yeah. And as far as a bath, a lot of that can be done at home. It doesn't always have to be done at the salon, um, but once a month is good. We do get a lot of people that think that they should wash their dog more often, but try not to go Unless once a month. Unless they've rolled in yeah. something or that something has specifically gotten on them, they they don't really don't need it more than once a month or unless it's medicated or yeah a, a special reason yeah obviously there's special circumstances um but if it's something like you spilled something on them or they step in something you can use like baby wipes mm. or something like that it doesn't have to be a full deep bath um, which can strip their oils and dry their skin out um their oils are important um it can it can make them stink and actually be more oily because you keep stripping the oils. We've had many, many dogs over the years that they they start going like every three weeks and then every two weeks and then every one week because their dog stinks. And it's hard to explain to them that they've actually like worsened the process because every time they come in, we're stripping the oils from their skin and then their skin starts to go into overtime to produce them. And it in turn then makes them stinky and that's what they don't like. So it's it's a... It's a it's a real circle there yeah. um, that you then have to recover from if you've done it too much. Um, Did it drying? Yeah, drying and and drying is very important. <clears throat> Even if your dog is short hair, that can actually make them funky. Like yeah. if, imagine if you just leave a wet towel, like pew. Like if you just leave a wet towel in a pile. Well, even though your dog's obviously not a wet towel in a pile, he's still going to like lay down, maybe trap moisture as he dries. It's going to be nasty. It can help get a lot of that shedding hair. Like we see a lot of towel dry dogs or just like air dried where their hair dries kind of clumpy. You're, you're just leaving all that dead hair trapped in the coat, trapping moisture, whatever else smells dirt like and i find dogs that tend to be common to be able to be washed at home are a lot of your double coated dogs that don't always need haircuts like a husky or a lab or a german shepherd um those dogs that are double coated are especially important to get dry more so than your pit bull or something like that because with that double coat the moisture gets trapped under that undercoat and that's where it's going to start to breed bacteria and you're going to get hot spots on the dogs. Um, so at the bare minimum, those dogs, you have, you can't just tell dry. You've got to get under that extra layer under your coat and get them dry all the way so they don't develop a skin infection. Yeah. And, and with that brushing goes hand in hand. So if you're just towel drying, but they have clumps of mm -hmm. undercoat, you know, in patches, you're not going to get that completely dry under there. Um, and we do see a lot of double coat dogs that do have trouble with hot spots. Yep. And we're like, well, they don't ever get dry. Like it, it, even as far when, even if it's not a bath, 
when they go out in the rain, in the rain. The and then they just come in. Like, yeah, any of that. And they just come in and lay down. Yeah. They're trapped in that moisture against their skin under all that hair. So yeah, brush them out and blow dry them real good as much as they'll let it. Um, as far as, as far as the dogs that hate grooming, let's get back to this or not even just hate it, but they have a hard time, whether it's because they're like anxious or grumpy or old or young or injury or yeah, anything like that. They have a rough time with it. Um, the more we do it, the better. Um, I want to stress that. So like you have a you have an older dog, he's used to just laying on the couch, maybe shuffling into the kitchen for his snacks, um, and then he comes to the groomer every six months, and we're asking him to lift his legs. He never does this. Stand up for at least an hour, maybe. He never does that. Stay awake for an uh-huh. hour. Right. What? Like. Yeah. It's just so much on them. It can be so overwhelming. Oh. Their patience can run out. They might get snappy because they're an old man and they want to go yeah. take their nappy. So it becomes a, a terrible experience every yeah. time. <clears throat> Whereas if they got regular practice, it's just like physical therapy. Yeah. They're they're used to doing it. They might not ever love it. We are, we've been doing dogs for yeah. our whole career that have never loved it. Yeah. But they it becomes, tolerate exactly like they come they learn that we're not so bad we're not trying to hurt them it's just like mm-hmm. something they have to get over with and then they can go back home and get all the snuggles yeah. um young dogs they have to know that this is going to be the rest of their life so if they have one horrible experience where we push them too far they're gonna think of that for the rest of their life so we always say it's comfort over vanity. So if we do have to take baby steps for any of these reasons, like we have to take a couple visits, maybe they just get a bath their first visit. Okay. Maybe it's just their nails. We don't want to push anyone too far to where they hate it. They hate us. Yep. They hate any groomer. They yep. hate anybody they ever see in a black t-shirt yep. or zip up smock or anything yep. like that. It's, it's, not good for anybody. anybody. It's not, I, especially not good for the dog, us. Yeah, it's not good for, for our patients level. Um, we will never, ever, ever push completing the groom in order to get money. Um, it could, because it's not beneficial for anybody involved. Like we do this because we actually love the animals. So it, I can't imagine taking my child to go get a haircut and him being scared and literally just holding his head still and keeping him in that chair while he screams and forcing him through it. Yeah. Um, he would never want to get his hair cut again. Understandable. <laughs> yeah. Um, so our biggest goal is just to keep it as happy as possible. So they just know that each time, like we said earlier, they might not love the grooming. But they get pumped to see us. Yeah. And they're still going to let us do the little things that we need to do because they trust us. They've decided that they trust that we're not going to hurt them. And that's immeasurably important for both sides. Literally. And when it comes to the young dogs, literally as soon as you get the dog, like we can start introducing it to nail clips and paw pad shaves. Um, Some people think their dog is too young or breeders that have said oh don't get its hair cut for six months or we don't have to cut its hair yeah just bring it in and and start different things exactly like even just have them familiar and that's some homework for you at home if if you don't want to bring him to the groomer for six months you still got to do stuff at home for those six months you can't throw him in the deep end and be like well why couldn't you get it done lady what's up like If you wait till they're an adolescent and then they show up and everything is loud and vibrating and it's a stranger, it's very scary. Yeah. Um, It's just, it's just overwhelming. Yeah. It can be overwhelming for, for any of them. Um, It's literally like, imagine if, if you went to the dentist and to get your hair cut and the doctor's office to get some vaccines, like all on the one, all on the same day, like. We're cutting their hair, we're brushing their teeth, we're doing their nails, 
and they've never experienced it before. Like, we don't want that to be their bar for grooming for the rest of their life, that first experience. Like, baby steps are important. It's, it's a lot easier to teach a dog from the beginning how to be groomed than it is to rehab a dog that has had bad experiences. Yeah. And, and so when it comes to, like, an anxious dog or a grumpy dog who we've heard where it's like, okay, well, every time he goes, like, he tries to bite for his nails or something. Okay, well, we can work with that. We can show him, like, we're not going to force him through it each time. Like, if he doesn't have to defend himself. Exactly. We're not going to push him too far. So if, if we see him and we can only get him washed this time, and he leaves still happy with us, mm -hmm. he's more likely to let us do more yes. next time. So more is key, more frequency. Mm -hmm. um, and it can also save you, like she said, it can save you more money in the long run. If, if every time he comes, it's like people have to like hold your dog down or something when he's been to the groomer, well, that's going to be more money that you have to pay there. Like, you might have to end up taking your dog to be sedated and whatnot. Like, that's not good for anybody. Nobody wants their dog to have to be sedated. However, if they can have a little bit of medication to just take the edge off without being knocked out every time is trauma, trauma, trauma. But if they can take a little bit of something, we've heard, uh, what is it? Uh, what are some of the ones we hear? Like trazodone. Yes. Trazodone, Enadryl, CBD oil. Um, talk to your vet. We're not telling you to just get yes. this medication. I know nothing about the medications and dosage. Talk to your vet and find out what works for your dog just to take the edge off. Yeah. Um, and then we can start to, if they're not on it as a all of the time anxiety medicine, then you start to wean them off of it as they as they get to know us. Um, it's not a terrible thing. Um, the example I used uh, the other day is I have absolutely extreme dental anxiety. If I wasn't allowed to take a Xanax because I'm going to go get a tooth pulled, they need to literally knock me unconscious because it's not going to happen. So <laughs> if a dog is genuinely that nervous and scared, just giving him a little something to take the edge off so that he can look around and be like, okay, it's not that bad. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> so, like, overall, we just want the most beneficial, calming, just least trauma experience for everyone. You don't want to be traumatized. Your dog doesn't want to be traumatized. We don't want to traumatize anyone. Mm -hmm. We don't want to be traumatized. Yeah. So all of these things, prevention, more exposure, all of it will just help everyone to be more at ease with it yeah. as life goes on. And that just reminded me of the part that I don't know that we have in our notes here. But as we're talking about just, it's just so very across the board in general. We just want all owners and dogs and groomers, everybody to be happy. Uh, this is not specific to us and our mobile business. Um, this is to wherever you take your dog to be groomed and finding the right groomer is a big part of that. Um, whether it was while we were at PetSmart and there was eight of us grooming, it might be the whole, whole shop that you're comfortable with knowing your dog, but it might be that one specific person is the only one that your dog trusts. Um, just like we get along with some people and don't get along with yeah. other people. Same thing with dogs. Uh, they have personalities. It weird, doesn't right? mean that you have to leave the whole shop. You might just want to try another groomer in the same shop. Um, but you might have to find and talk to other groomers if your dog hates grooming. I can't tell you how many dogs that we've had that people say, oh, my God, they've never been able to get done before. I thought they were terrible dogs. And we're like, hey. Yeah. They didn't pull a muscle for us. Yeah, that's weird. They must have just clicked with us. It doesn't mean we did something magical. Um, and it could also have just been the environment. 
Yeah. Like it could just be that you went on a day, you could have even still went to the same salon, yep. but you went at a different time of day. You went early when no one was really in there. It was just like two groomers, yeah. no other relaxed. dogs. Yeah, it's quiet. Or did you go in midday when everyone slammed? Yeah, holiday time where everything's crazy. Dogs barking, phones ringing. Yeah. And then that's why we love the mobile because yeah. it's just us. Yeah. We don't have to stop for anything. To no phones. phones or make appointments or anything. It's just us and the dogs. Yeah, yeah. just Which that is... individualized attention yeah. can be so important. Like, so important. And most of the time, we're both working. So if it's a larger dog that needs extra help, the other person is there to help. Um, yeah, sometimes all it takes is distraction. Like, you can still get those nails done if somebody's at the front telling your Literally dog just talking the to best him. boy. Or even just saying, hey, what's that over there? Sometimes yeah. that's all they need. Yeah. Like, it can be really easy. It can be. Can, yeah. That's what we want to teach them. It can be. Um, practice makes progress. So just the more you do it, even if it's at home, touch their paws, touch their face, whatever they hate at the groomer, start doing it more, get them used to it. Um, move them if they don't like their legs being lifted or something like that. Those are things that you can do at home. Just, just little stuff. The effects of medicine. Oh, um, yeah, we didn't really go too deep into, like, matting, um, the effects of it, um, how serious it can be and, and why you do want to prevent it. Um, we do get a lot of people, um, even we've heard it, we've all seen it on Facebook stories about, like, oh, look what they did to my dog. They shaved him. Oh, they abused him. Blah, 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 blah. Um, <laughs> brushing out those mats is meaner <laughs> is meaner than shaving them off um and like if you if you catch a knot you're like ooh but imagine if like your whole coat is a knot and yeah your hair covers every inch of your yeah. body and not just your head yeah literally everything but your eyelids like it's all just matted brushing that out is just going to pull at their skin because the mats pull the skin into, up into the hair, um, which is why you should never ever use scissors to demat your dog. Um, we hear that a lot and we've seen a lot of dogs leaving vets with stitches. So don't. Um, but yeah, so that's basically like matting is a tight sweater. So it's constricting, it can cut off the circulation. So when you remove that, all the blood rushes to that area. We've seen dogs with matted ears get hematomas. Mm -hmm. Like you see them sh shaking their heads a lot. All the blood is rushing to that. It can rupture, it can- Sometimes it just swells up, but sometimes it literally ruptures. And, and people accuse us of cutting their dog. When Whereas it's just- We never cut the skin. Yeah, you can it's, see- it's the swelling from it pulls it collects in the tips of the ear they shake their head because now all of the blood is rushing to that area it's pulling in the tips of the ear the blood has nowhere else to go comes through the skin mm. imagine that very, i can't <laughs> very very often i'd say even more more often than like with the undercoat dogs but when i was talking about making sure they get dry under that and all the way down to the skin when it comes to the matted dogs, um, we've seen a lot of people where it's it's not neglected. It's, it's simply not knowing how to properly brush their dog. So let's say they've got this puppy and they're just not using the right brush and they're not using a comb, so they're not getting all the way down to the skin. So it's pelted by the skin, but the top layer is brushed out nicely. So they actually think they're doing a good job and they're bathing the dog regularly and so the water's getting under there but they're not getting all the way dry very very often i've seen so many skin infections to go along with the bruising once we remove the matting yeah because uh, that moisture gets trapped under there so i promise you that we don't always even think oh my god they're neglecting their dog we know when you're trying to do the right thing 
Uh, that's why we want to do videos like this, so we can teach you and make sure you actually know what the right thing is. Yeah. Um, so like yeah. she said, a lot of the times, like with the moisture being trapped under the skin, it can cause sores. Um, the skin is now softer. It can it can it's leave them open for infection. Okay. Um, we've we've seen dogs with like you know, and we don't know what's going to be under there until we okay. shave yeah, in there. The thing, so right? like yeah. sometimes we'll find like open wounds. I've mm. seen parasites in wounds. Okay. Like we never you, you ne yeah. yeah you you never know what can hide under that kind of stuff. So there can be there can can be moles, warts. Imagine also when it's not just water getting trapped underneath. So a, a, a very common area to get neglected and matted is their whole sanitary area. So mm -hmm. now imagine you've got urine and feces that are getting matted to the skin of the dog. Yeah. Um, it's so raw and it's always very sad for us trying to keep the dog as comfortable as possible while removing it. Yeah. But it has to come off. Um, and sometimes there are instances where matting has been so bad that we can't even get it off. We don't feel comfortable. And we actually have to send you guys to the vet to have them sedated for the vet to shave it off because it is very highly likely that they will get cut. And at least if they do, the vet can help them. We don't, we don't ever want to see that. It's not fun for us. It's not like we're just being lazy, just, oh, we just rather shave them and brush this out. Like, it's not fun for anybody. No. It's not. Yeah. So we do see it a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot on, on Facebook posts. If you ever get sucked into them and stuff that so very often it's blamed on a lazy groomer. Um, I, I only know the groomers that I've worked with, so that's yeah. not a ton. Yeah, um, I'm sure there are some lazy groomers. Absolutely. There's lazy um, everybody. But also what I want to say about the, the majority of, people, of groomers that I know personally or I've talked to or interacted with, usually we're of like the artistic type of personalities. It's it's not fun to shave down a dog to just do a basic shave down. Um, it's not enjoyable for the groomer. We like to do really cute haircuts. We spend a lot of money on our tools. We spend a lot of time learning how to do what we can do. We love getting to scissor hair and getting to make the dog really, really cute. And it's not at all satisfying when all we have to do is shave them down. Um, it's never the groomer. I can't say never. I take yeah. it back again. So few and far between. <laughs> it could be a groomer. That, that's when you need to test it out and find a new one. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, like, that's why you see, if you do see our page, we post a lot of fluffy pups. Yeah. We like doing cute little round oh. faces and, and nicely trimmed up bodies mm -hmm. and stuff. It does show our skill. It's fun. The dog's cute. We, we're never just like, oh, look at this fun, matted, bruised up shave down I did today. Cool, guys. Huh. Like. We don't, we just want everyone to be happy and comfortable. Comfort over vanity. Yeah. It's what is most comfortable for your dog. If he's matted, you like him to be a little longer. This time we got to start fresh for him to be happy. Yeah. And that's what we got to do. And then you got to know that if he won't let you brush him at home, you got to get him groom more often. Yeah. Um, but the amount of times we hear, but, oh, but I don't like it short. He doesn't like it's, it matted. It's not, he doesn't it's, like it yanked at when right. it's matted. It's about what you like. You need to make sure to keep his coat in that condition. Yeah. Um, with having our own business now, we are to a point where we can say we won't, we won't continually put your dog through pain just to satisfy that you like him cute that way. Yeah. If you won't do the part on your end. Yeah. And, and like it's she said before, it's not always a matter of neglect or laziness or anything. Like sometimes it's like, okay, time got away from you. Life happens. You went a little too long. Some little mats got in. You didn't know the right brush. You just got this dog you never had before. There can be all kinds of things. We're not like trying to like bash everybody for every little mistake. Like, but if it's a pattern, 
like every time we have to hurt your dog by yeah. brushing it out we got to choose the dog yeah and we will that's why we're here right it's, we will choose the comfort of the dog like she said only when it's been proven a pattern that we've given you the right tools to use we've tried to help you with time frames or even saving money um we're in this for the wellness of the dogs and for the bond with you guys and the bond with us. That's really our whole goal with everything. Yeah. And, and hopefully you and your dog would learn to trust us or any groomer you choose that kind of follows those same guidelines. Yes. Like same thing. We tell people all the time, like people complain about their, their groomers. Like, yeah, I've heard, Oh my gosh, this lady told me like, oh yeah, the la the lady I was taking them to, she caught them like the last eight times. Why are <sighs> you still going there, ma'am? Yeah, go go to somebody else. There's Please. others. There's others. Please go somewhere else. Anywhere else, I'll drive you. Like <laughs> the same thing with us. Like yeah. if if our doctor is mean to us, we're not gonna mm -hmm. go back every time. There's other doctors. Yeah. Find what works best for you and your dog. Yes. Like, please. It doesn't have to be us. We're not here like, oh, choose the magic room bus. Like, it would be cool if you did. You can. Yeah. Um, but yeah, any any groomer that's going to uh, choose the comfort of your dog yes. over vanity is what is important overall in yes. the long run. Yep. Well, I should say humanity before vanity. Yeah. Uh, the same that we would, yeah. the same that we would want for us. So I think that's all. I've, I don't yeah. even know how long we've been talking. <laughs> yeah, it's about 12.50. Okay. Right? But yeah, I think we can put it up to questions now. Thank you very much. This is Erin uh, again. Um, thank you so much for your presentation. It was great. Um, I actually wanted, I had a question. Um, what is your, uh, what's your territory? So... <laughs> We, we have, we started doing like all over Harvard County. So we do still have a couple of days a month in certain far out areas. Like we'll have like a bell camp day, a have a grace day, but mainly now we are sticking to Forest Hill and Bel Air mm -hmm. in Harvard County. Um, we are still accepting new clients. So put those applications in, go mm -hmm. to our website. Um, but yeah, so it's based on location. So mm -hmm. We might not have availability in certain areas right away, mm -hmm. um, but we can compare our maps and calendars and find yeah, the closest availability to you. And I try to make sure that when people inquire that are in an area, we're not taking new clients right now to at least follow our Facebook page because we will make announcements if somebody moved and we have a permanent spot open or we just had a cancellation that day, we can squeeze somebody in. Um, so still at least follow our Facebook page because that's where we make all of our announcements. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay, great. Um, do you, you don't groom cats, do you? No. Nope. Do you know anybody that does? Or do you have any recommendations? If you don't, that's fine. I don't currently. Um, okay. I only knew I was grooming cats when I worked at PetSmart. So that's been since July of last year. Um, so, I, and I've told people uh, the best I would do is I would Google cat groomers in Harvard County because yeah. I don't know. Check with your vet to yeah. see if they can do it or something like that. But yeah, okay. sorry. No, I didn't dogs to put you on the spot. <laughs> if anybody that's watching um, has a question, you can put it in the chat or if you want to unmute yourself real quick and ask your question, um, let us know. The last question I had, and then I guess we can wrap things up is, um, so my, my dog, um, is an angel. Um, mm -hmm. but when it comes time, when he sees the nails clip, nail clippers come out, um, he turns into a completely different guy. Mm -hmm. Um, do you have any tips for, um, a dog that is just like, just so freaked out by the nail trimmers? I mean, it could be for any number of reasons. Like it could be the way he's held when it happens. It could be the sound. You can try like covering his ears. They make, you can put cotton balls in his ears. They make happy hoodies. Um, 
try somebody bribing him with treats the whole time. It de- yeah. There's so many things that yeah, you could try. I say if he's responsive to a specific treat, then it makes him extra, extra happy. Uh, you could try that. They make little mats, but you guys, you could use a plate, you smear some peanut butter on it and hold it up. Um, but also the same rule of thumb that we use and not pinning them down and making them do it. Like, don't, don't get your husband to come over and sit on the dog so that you can absolutely get its nails clipped. Um, yeah. And, and, and like, yell at him, stop being yeah. like that. I'm a, try to keep it soothing and nice and <laughs> super praise every time he doesn't fight. Yes. Even if it's for one nail and that's an accomplishment for you guys, throw a party. Yes. Like they love the positive. Yes. Um, yeah. They want to make us happy. Yeah. So if one nail is a big accomplishment for you, do it after one nail. If it's yeah. like, oh my God, I got a whole foot done. Um, <laughs> I mean, it might take a while to get up to it, but if they're like, oh my God, did you see how happy she got when she got it done? Like, I don't, I don't know why this is exciting, but she loves it. Like, okay. <laughs> okay. That's wonderful. Okay. Yeah. I like the peanut butter on the plate thing. I'll try that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, fabulous. All right. I don't see any other questions that have come through. So. Thank you very much for joining us. Um, yeah. And the link um, will be out on our website uh, by this afternoon um, so that you can uh, play back the recording at any time. All okay. right, ladies, thank you so much. Have Bye. a great day. Bye. Bye. <sighs>